What's up guys? It's your boy Jay Color here with a brand new episode of the main event and we are back for season two in a brand new format. You can actually see my ugly mug now. Anyway, today we are covering um, the WWE event Backlash. I'm going to go through the full event and give you my thoughts on every match um, and as well as my overall thoughts on the show, which are being entirely consumed by Jinder Mahal, but we'll get to that. Let's go through match by match, so we'll talk about the Shinsuke Nakamura Dolph Ziggler match up first. Now, why did they open with this? Didn't they build all the promo for this pay-per-view around the fact that Nakamura was making the Zing in-ring debut. I mean, I understand that they wanted to get the crowd pumped up for the event, but that didn't seem like the way to do it. That being said, I mean, it, if that was the purpose, it served its purpose because Nakamura was crazy over with the Chicago fans. Um, but as for the match itself, I thought it was actually a little tame. I was kind of disappointed, to be quite honest. The match seemed to favor Dolph Ziggler over Nakamura, which didn't seem to be like the smart way to go when you're bringing in this guy for the first time and you're presenting him as a as a top player in your on your show. It was really the Dolph Ziggler show, to be quite honest. Um, I did like uh, like how Ziggler spat at Nakamura. I thought that was uh, a neat spot. It looked like it went in his mouth, so maybe not so neat for Nakamura. Uh, and then I like the super kick to the back of the head. Um, I mean, I guess if this was your first time seeing Nakamura, it would be kind of cool because uh, he did get in all his stuff. Um, he really sold how stiff he can be. And, I mean, it was a good match, but it just didn't seem to be the way to go about selling Nakamura. Uh, next up, we had the tag team title match between uh, Breezango and the Usos, the champs. And I like this match a lot. Um, I had a friend over while we watched this event, a friend of mine, Alex, and this was the most entertaining match of the night. Uh, and granted, it wasn't a great match, and Breezango could probably do more than this in the ring, but the fact that it was incredibly hilarious trumped all that. I loved everything um, Tyler did. It was incredibly fun. It's the funniest stuff I've seen in wrestling in a long time. Um, barring uh, Down South Wrestling or whatever that web series was. Um, I loved how Tyler was mopping in the ring. Uh, I liked how he would roll back and forth between the buckles. Um, and I liked how he changed disguises halfway through. Um, I mean... They really kind of sold me on the fact that Brizango might walk away with the victory in the, in the titles, especially when Tyler hit the unprettier. And as you were going into the finish of the match, it did sort of pick up athletically uh, as they were kind of rushing to the end. But that said, even if that wasn't the case, I thought the, the match itself was so entertaining that it would trump the fact that maybe it wasn't the most athletic match. Um, next up, we had Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. <clears throat> and I like both these guys. I like Sammy. I like Baron. Um, but this match seemed repetitive. They haven't faced each other that often, but I think the type of matches these guys have been wrestling in the past year or so, this match, it seems like when you put these two guys together, they just, uh, they just highlight the other's... Um, kind of flaws. I don't want to say flaws, but it's this seemed like the type of match that Sami Zayn would wrestle um, Braun Strowman over and over again. And this seemed like the kind of match that Baron Corbin would wrestle with like a Dolph Ziggler. And it was a good match, but that fact itself kind of hampered it for me. Um, and it, it kind of made me tune out. Um, I will say Sami Zayn is now and will be for the foreseeable future until they someone else proves it 
he is the master of selling. This guy sells like no one's business. Uh, so it was a good match, but that feeling of, man, I've really seen this before from both these guys kind of hampered the whole affair. Um, next up, we had the United States Championship match. Oh, no, wait, sorry. We had the women's tag team match. And even though I forgot about it here, um, well, I forgot about it then, too. Even watching it, I forgot about it. They've got to stop putting all the SmackDown women in the same match, month after month, show after show. And I understand Charlotte's in the mix now, and you got um, this heel faction, but it, it highlights the lack of depth on the SmackDown side. I used to say that the SmackDown roster, women's roster, had a lot more depth than the Raw roster, and the Raw roster has really kind of stepped it up. And I think that you wouldn't notice that as much if they stopped putting all the SmackDown women in one match. When, so it just makes me not care, you know? And I do kind of like how the heels won. And I think that this could be an interesting faction, but there's only three other women on the entire roster. So what's the point? Like, are you just going to keep doing the same match over and over? Because I don't want to see that. Um, so my sourness on the divisions kind of affected how I how I viewed this match. Uh, I'd much rather have seen, like, Charlotte and Naomi go at it again. Charlotte versus anybody, really. They brought in this top the best women on either show and they're they're not highlighting her in, on the first pay-per-view um, so next up we did actually have the United States Championship match uh, and this was bar none the best match on the card uh, it was really great it kinda lived up to all the expectations I had about it um, because I think these guys can do better and I think they will the more they work together. But just kind of recently, the feuds that they've been in, uh, it's really not highlighted them to the best of their ability. Like the, don't get me wrong, the best friend feud between Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho was a fantastic feud. But I don't feel like the company gave them the ability to have the best matches that they could have. Um, and so coming off of that, coming off of watching Owens fight guys that he's better than, and same with AJ. Um, this was a breath of fresh air. At the same time, I recognize these guys can do better in the ring, and I, I think they'll get the chance to. Um, some moments I really liked, uh, I talked about this with Alex, the fact that AJ's the good guy in this feud, but he, his character hasn't really changed at all. I thought that was really well done. Um, they didn't sacrifice anything, make him like this goofy face or revert him back to how he was, um, because I really like heel AJ, um, and I think that you, the position you put him in can really just make all the difference in the world. You put him in a different position against a different guy, and suddenly he's a face, and I think that that works really good. Um, this match kind of got the crowd back into things, and I like the back and forth. Uh, I love the pace of this match. It was just right out of the gate. It was on fire. I thought that was great. Um, I loved... The stuff with uh, AJ selling, um, I like how he missed the, like he went up for the phenomenal forearm and he just kind of collapsed into the ring. I thought that was great and it's a really dangerous spot to pull off but I think he nailed it. Um, I liked how he went for the Styles Clash initially when he got injured on the apron and uh, Kevin kind of rolled out of it and it first initiated the injury. Um, when AJ hit the suplex on Owens on the apron, I thought Kevin was legit hurt because it sounded like he was almost calling for the ref. Like he seemed to be in pain. Like if not, <clears throat> great way to sell it. Uh, I'm sure it hurt regardless, but I mean it looked like he was not going to be able to continue. Um, and then finally at the end there, how AJ got stuck in the hole. Um, I mean, I, sure, I would have liked to see seen a clean finish, but I think this was so creative that uh, I'm okay with it. And because he, I can't remember the last time I've ever seen anything like that. I, and when he fell into the hole, I thought this is completely unique. I don't think I've ever seen this. And then 
the other part of this is the fact that we know these guys are going to face each other. They're going to have a, a nice feud, and it'll culminate in a even better match with a clean finish. So I, I'm just along for the ride with these two. Um, next up, we had the faux Wyatt confrontation, which was the literal definition of a pee break match. Um, as this match was going on, I kind of just was cleaning up the table, cleaning food off the table, I went to the bathroom, and I would catch glimpses of it here and there. Uh, and not to say that these two couldn't have a great match and a great feud, but they, they've they not given us any reason to invest in this. They really kind of dropped the ball with Luke Harper. I think they had an opportunity to make him a top star, and they didn't. Um, and these guys have so much history, but like there's, there's nothing there. Like, I think... Rowan did a little spot on Talking Smack, and that's really been it, which is, I, which is a shame. I do kind of like the things he did where he was interacting with the mask. I don't really know what they were going for, but it, it was intriguing at least a little bit. But, I mean, that wasn't enough to salvage. And they put it in a position on the card where they knew it was going to be the pee break match. But uh, Next up we had... The WWE Championship match. And your winner and your new WWE Champion, Jinder Mahal. Jobber Jinder. Enhancement Guy Jinder. Three. MB Gender is the WWE Champion. And I'm not saying that they couldn't have built this guy up into something, smack down the land of opportunity. This wasn't the way to do it. I mean, they kind of just took advantage of the fact that they wanted to have a guy of Indian descent hold the title, I guess. And they kind of riding off of this wave of people reacting to him being the number one contender in the first place. That's not enough to make a champion, man. There's an old saying, and there's a lot of people going around right now and they're saying, Oh, well, this, the fact that he won the title, it's going to elevate him. Man, that's... No. The belt doesn't make the man. The man makes the belt. And Jinder Mahal has not been built up to a place where he can believably hold the belt. But, I mean, this is a spot we're in, I guess. Um, part of me is happy that the belt got taken off of Randy Orton, but not to enough of a degree for me to be excited about Jinder Mahal holding it. As for the match itself, it was a Randy Orton match. The other thing I have a problem with is the fact that Jinder doesn't seem to have any of the skills to be on the top of a card. He doesn't have the mic skills, as evidenced by his promo earlier in the night. <clears throat> he doesn't have the in-ring skills, as evidenced by the fact that he had a meh match with AJ Styles. This match was fine, and I think Randy Orton, surprisingly, seemed to have a lot of fire. A lot more fire than he's exhibited recently. Um, he seemed to really be excited about what was going on, fired up. I mean, it's still a Randy Orton match. A passionate Randy Orton in a Randy Orton match is a Randy Orton match. Um, I mean, the, the spots to really take note of in this match were how he started tossing the Singh brothers around, started throwing them on announce tables, and... It was kind of interesting how he he got ahead of himself and didn't realize like how little boyish these guys are, and he ended up throwing one, and the guy basically landed on his head, and the camera cut to Randy, and he was like... <laughs> um, but yeah, man, this is the place we're at. Overall, I thought this was a good show. Um... I liked the Nakamura-Ziggler match, even if I didn't like the implications of it. I, I really loved the tag team match. 
um, the title match, not the women's match. I love... Sorry, guys, the camera cut off. Um, as I was saying, I like the U.S. title match. Um, but, I mean, people are going to remember tonight as the night that Jinder Mahal became WWE champion. Um, so, I mean, we'll see where it goes from here. Um, I'm not saying he can't be a great champion. Um, we kind of got JBL as champ 15 years ago in the same way, 14 to 15 years ago, where he just kind of rose up out of his obscurity. Um, but the thing I'm afraid of are the times where it's been the opposite. The opposite of like JBL's like best case scenario. Um, worst case scenario would be like Jack Swagger. And if I had to guess, I would say we're in a Jack Swagger scenario. Now the main difference is during that time on SmackDown where Jack Swagger became the world champ, the SmackDown roster was weak. Whereas right now, it's I mean, it's great. You got AJ Styles, you got Sami Zayn, you got Baron Corbin, Kevin Owens. Uh, all these guys could be main eventing pay-per-views. Rusev's coming in. Uh, so the roster is great. I'm not really sure why they felt like they had to put the title on Jinder Mahal of all people, but I mean, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll see where it goes from here. <clears throat> so, those are my thoughts on Backlash. I do kind of want to touch, like I said, on uh, t NXT TakeOver Chicago. If you haven't watched TakeOver Chicago, go do that. If you have the option to watch TakeOver Chicago or Backlash, you say, oh, I'm only got three hours before my flight. Watch TakeOver Chicago. TakeOver Chicago blew away everything on the Backlash card. An incredible show from start to finish. Um, I'm just going to pull up my notes here. I mean, I could I could talk about it all day without them, but I, I really want to kind of hit all the points of um, all the great points in this show. Uh, you started off with Eric uh, Young versus Roderick Strong. This was a good match. Uh, I really liked the knee strikes. I liked how Strong kind of uh, took the fight to Sanity right at the beginning. Um, I will say the Sanity shtick is getting old for me. I, I kind of feel like they have to go in a different direction with it. Uh, it if the Roderick Strong storyline feels like the Ty Dillinger storyline. Feels like the No Way Jose storyline. Um, but Eric Young is a capable wrestler. And these guys put on a good match. I like how uh, uh, Strong came off onto the top rope with a knee strike. And Young fell back into the other members of Sanity. Uh, and the <clears throat> the finish was incredible. I don't know what that move is called where it's a suplex into a backbreaker. But, wow. Um, moving on to the United Kingdom match. I'll, I'll narrow it even more. If you only have the ability to watch one match from this... 48, 24 hour period, watch the United Kingdom Championship match. It's a match of the year qualifier candidate. Um, for me right now, I would say it's my match of the year. I I know people are going to say Okada, Omega, <clears throat> and I like that match a lot, but I think for me, this match is tighter. Uh, it's more action-packed. I like the storytelling a lot in this one. I'm going to go Pete Dunne. Tyler Bate is my current match of the year. Um, white hot crowd for these guys, man. I feel like the crowds for TakeOver Chicago and Backlash were different crowds. Um, and the TakeOver Chicago crowd was great. Man, for this match, this was like Rocky Hogan territory for me. That's how hot the crowd felt. It was incredible. Um, there was a I love the chain wrestling, I love the storytelling, I love the reversals that were going on in this. Uh, as the finish happened, I it, it almost seemed like a botch. Looking back at it, I don't think it was where Tyler Bay dived to the outside and uh, Pete Dunne rolled him in and hit his finisher for the win. Um, but that's how sick it looked. Um, after this match, I'm kind of wondering you know, where the division goes from here, but I think with Pete Dunne as a champion, uh, it's only going to be good things. I mean, you can have him in one match uh, every other week on NXT, and it would be worth the price of admission. Um, I like the commentary in this match, but surprisingly, I felt that JR wasn't 
as good as Nigel McGuinness. It kind of felt like JR was ancillary. It felt like Nigel kind of was acting as color and play-by-play -play guy, uh, and JR was just giving his two cents here and there. Um, that said, I do I did like the commentary, uh, and, and I it's better than maybe having like Tom Phillips on, and definitely better than um, I don't even remember the third guy's name. That's how forgettable he is. He's like Byron Sexton light. Um, next up, we have the triple threat women's match. And this was a good match. Um, Ruby Riot surprisingly seems very over. I've only seen her in a couple instances, but she, she seems really over with the crowd, which is a little surprising to me. Um, I like the German suplexes in this match. I liked Ruby's move. I think they called it the Nightshade, where she was in the she hit Nikki Cross into the buckle. That that seemed really really good. I will say though that I think Oscar <laughs> at this rate can go undefeated five years because she needs a better opponent. She really needs a Bailey level opponent that's going to take her to the next level and make beating her believable. Um, next up we had the NXT title match and it didn't close the show. Looking back I see why but uh, in that moment I thought well this isn't good for Hideo Itami and I, I'm a big fan of Hideo Itami. Um, but it really seems like all his luster has kind of gone off of him due to his injuries and everything. Um, that Bobby Roode entrance was stupid. It was stupid. They've kind of jumped the shark with him. The piano thing, it was just ridiculous. Um, I, I uh, liked how Hideo started hitting those slaps on Roode. I thought those were hilarious. Those were great. Um... And I think, I mean, these guys, I feel like can go again because they had a good match. Uh, it's just the fact that it's sad that Hideo has lost so much. Um, and then finally in the main event, we had the Tag Team Championship ladder match. And it was a good match. It was, uh, it had a lot of spots. It was really great. Um, but I think everybody's going to remember it for the storytelling in the end. Because... As good as that ladder match was, as as vested as I was, I really like DIY. I love the the jump off the the super tall ladder on it looked like they killed themselves. I liked how um, Johnny Gargano saved Tommaso Ciampa. The turn was so expertly executed. I felt like I was gonna tear up watching that turn. How Gargano crawled into Ciampa's lap. It was. All the backstory that's there between them and the execution, it was just perfect, man. Um, so those are my thoughts on TakeOver Chicago. Overall, better show than um, Backlash. Um, so let me know what you guys want me to talk about in the next video, and I will catch you next time. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, let's kick off Season 2. It's your boy. Just witnessed one for the ages. I'll remember that one for a long time.